What's up, everybody? There's a lot of things that I want to say about Revelation and end time prophecy, but I'm going to give you my take on things in a different video. There's a couple of current affair things that I really want you guys to see, but I wanted to throw a video in here, history video, because this is an important question to ask here. When was Revelations written? By the way, this artwork is Albrecht Drewer, and he's a big-time society guy back in the day, so if you like digging through hidden meaning stuff, definitely look him up. But here's the deal. Ever since I learned what I now know and have been making videos about what's happened in the past, it really makes me look at the Book of Revelations a little different. There's some new people here, so you guys check out my playlist about the ancient cataclysms and earth chain cycles, especially the ones about the 14th century absolute collapse of society. Everybody's heard about the Black D, but they leave out 90% of the story. There was a drastic change in stable conditions, let's say. Nowadays, we would attribute this to the weakening magnetic field, but all of those lightning bolts in the back that have lit the houses up there... This isn't hyperbole. Here are just a few of the many examples that I have from all around the world of what was going on at that time. Between Cathy and Persia, there reigned vast rain of fire falling in flakes like snow and burning up mountains and plains and other lands with men and women. And then arose vast masses of smoke and whoever beheld this left within a space of a half hour and likewise any man or woman who looked upon those who had seen this. That account isn't very specific about this, but many accounts say that the Black D was because of breathing tainted air. You know, they act like people didn't know what germs were back then. They may not have had that word, but they knew exactly what was going on. One pope was surrounded by circles of fire to purify the air that he was breathing. He wound up getting it anyway. You can pause and read this, but let's see. We had... Year after year, signs in the sky, on earth, in the air, all indicative as men thought. Some terrible coming event. There was a great comet, and then armies of locusts. There were quakes that made mountains sink into the earth. In Corinthia, 30 villages and the tower were ruined. I'm just going to skip to the bottom. What with flood, fog, locust swarms, earthquakes, and the like. It's not surprising that many men deem the cup of the world's sins to be full and the end of the kingdom of man to be at hand. So, like I said, I've got a whole playlist explaining what has happened in these past cycles. I don't need to explain it in this video. You can go watch those, but this is why it's important to this video. Around 700 years ago, all of these great cataclysms occurred, and then after that, the clergy took over, and they started with the Holy Roman empire but eventually the j suits went out and conquered the education system worldwide now this is a couple hundred year period where if you said anything that the clergy didn't like then you were a heretic and literally burn the common folk weren't even allowed to have their own copy of a bible that was a heresy and they gave sermons in latin which nobody spoke so all of our history from that time and before all goes through a very narrow funnel. So now that you know all of this just happened 700 years ago, let me ask you, when was Revelations written? I know it's the book of Revelation. Calm down. I know that really bothers some people. So from everything that I've heard, they really don't know who John was that wrote it. Here they're saying John the Elder, uh... They say it might have been the same John as Book of John, but I don't think they're sure. But let's just consider the thought that, you know, these cycles come around, you know, grand solar minimum, magnetic excursion, whatever they are. And what if somebody that already wielded a lot of power decided not to tell everybody else about the last one that had happened before that and the one before that and use all this to their advantage and tell everybody it's Klamata Chang. Well, that's modern day. They probably didn't foresee that one at the time, but they very well could have been forward thinking enough to say, hey, next time one of these comes around, uh, let's not tell everybody it's coming and we can rule the world. 
I want to tell you about Anatoly Fomenko's interpretation of revolution, Revelation. He is a Russian mathematician, I think astrophysicist, uh, all-around researcher. And he wrote, I think there's seven volumes, very long and detailed, uh, about how the timeline of history has been changed. He puts Jesus at 1035 AD, and what he says is a lot of history is the same story over and over. He made up this 26-point reference table, and guess what? All these stories are the same. You can read the books for the specifics. Another thing he did is astronomical calculations, like when they would use a eclipse or some other celestial event in history, and when he ran the simulations for that area, well, there's no way that these things could have happened at that specific time. It's definitely some eye-opening work. I, of course, I don't agree with everything he says, just like everybody else doesn't agree with everything I say, but he's got some really good stuff in there. Keep in mind, this is translated from Russian to English, and sometimes the syntax is off. But he says the apocalypse itself doesn't contain a single explicit chronological indication of the epoch when it was written. And there are no historical figures identified. And some researchers categorically reject to credit this with John from the book of John. So let us finally turn to the apocalypse itself. And its astronomical nature becomes immediately evident. Especially when we compare it to the ancient celestial charts. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard anybody say it's describing celestial locations time specific. Now, this is an incredibly thick academic research level book, and I just condensed four pages down to the juicy bits, and I'm going to do the same with each example that he gives here. But he is using ancient or medieval constellation maps and says, you know, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace be unto to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits opposite his throne. This is how the constellation used to be drawn in medieval manuscripts. And you can see the Ursa Major is the celestial throne opposite the seven celestial luminaries. I'm guessing that's the Pleiades. By the way, almost every culture has stories of a time before the seven sisters. From the throne came flashes of lightning, like the picture I showed earlier, rumblings and pills of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Thus, seven fiery icon lamps are situated before the throne on which God sits in glory. The sea of glass, similar to crystal, apparently is the sky as observed by the author of the Apocalypse. The constellation of Cassiopeia and the throne were drawn as Christ sitting on his throne in the Middle Ages. I looked, and there before me was a door standing open to heaven, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. The person sitting on the throne can be seen on almost every medieval star chart. You see the feather that he's holding here? This shows up in a lot of these, and I have seen old drawings where a feather was representing a comet or meteor in the sky. It makes sense. A uh, comet is from the ancient Greek for long hair. And here it looks like they have water coming down. So in these cycles, you have intense flooding and drought. You get extremes. He makes comparisons of the gemstones that are described as the stars in the sky. And, you know, if you think about it, you have green colored flashing stars and red twinkly stars. You know, if you've really looked close at the stars, you see that there are different colors to them. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Emerald is bluish green gemstone. One sees a rainbow encircling the constellation of the throne on every medieval and contemporary star chart. This luminous strip is the Milky Way. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. Any complete astronomy textbook points out that the ancient sky was divided into 24 wing-shaped segments. 
I'm skipping over some really detailed information. Uh, thus, each elder of the apocalypse is apparently a star hour in the equatorial system of coordinates. The white coloring of the elders simply reflects the white color of the stars in the sky, and the golden crown appears to refer to the constellation of the northern crown. That is exactly above the heads of all 24 elders. So I'm skipping over quite a bit and getting a couple more of the better ones and then getting to the point. Here you see different medieval drawings for the sun, moon, Jupiter, uh, Saturn, which is seen devouring a sun. This goes all the way back to the ancient Greek Titans because, well, Saturn ran into another celestial body and devoured it back in the ancient past, but I'm not getting into it. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Apparently, this describes a bright equine planet. It's pulled by the horses on the chariot, carrying the glorious rider with a bow. There's only one such constellation, Sagittarius. The horse is said to be white, and he goes on with numerous explanations. And he does this for basically the whole book. And like I said, the guy is a mathematician. He's got 30 plus pages with exact definitions of what's going on with charts to back it up. So it really sounds like he's on to something here. By the way, all of these are uploaded to Internet Archive, so you can go there and read it for free. Uh, Anatoly Famico, Famico, History, Science or Fiction, I believe. Here's one you probably haven't seen before, a medieval illustration from the... 16th century with the writer firing a musket. Now, cutting to the chase, he says that an astronomical horoscope is encrypted in the apocalypse and provides for the possibility of dating it. The date of the horoscope is 1st of October 1486, which ideally corresponds to the expected medieval date of the Judgment Day in 1492. Now, you guys that have been around for a while, you've heard me several times always throw out the caveat that all of those drastic events that are dated from the 14th century, the 1300s, could have been as recent as the 1480s. There's also a big series of events that happened right at that time. Fall of Constantinople, the ex expulsion of the Jews from Spain. That was just prior to Columbus setting sail to America. I think Columbus was on a recon mission to come over to see how messed up America was from all the cataclysms. But I do think that the seas were messed up from all of this for a period of time because, well, I've read it somewhere. Actually, Plato, Timaeus. But the poop could have hit the fan in, you know, 1450. 60, 70, 80 in that time frame and just been 30 years of hell on earth. But what I do know is, you know, they say in some places it was as many as 15 out of 16 people were gone. Uh, I think a safe number would be about 70%, but many people refer to it, to it as a third of the people exiting. You also had volcanic winter conditions and acid rain, so this is affecting all the wildlife, third of the wildlife. But the main point to all of this is, was Revelation written about the future end times, or was it written about events that had already happened? They knew that this happened before many times, and what if some rich and powerful people said, well, hey, let's uh, burn everybody that still has you know, copies of ancient texts that say anything about this, and next time this rolls around, we will tell everybody it's the end of the world. And if we do it right, then we can wind up having absolute control. Hmm, there's a thought. You guys that have been here for a long time, you know all of the details that I've covered on this channel, even down to the comets and meteors, there was a, a meteor strike in the 1300s in far eastern Europe that they say wiped out everything within a 200-mile circumference. Flooding wiped out whole villages. Uh, you know, the official date, 1314, it started raining and didn't stop for four months straight. Washed away all the topsoil. They say during... Uh, major seismic events that in France and other places, but France specifically, big 
springs gushing water came up out of the ground and said that all the flooding of the Rhine River or sorry the Seine right uh it what it couldn't be attributed to the rain alone there was way more water than it had actually rained there at the time but all of these apocalyptic events happened between five to seven hundred years ago and then the clergy had a complete clamp down on knowledge and in the subsequent centuries the J suits went out and subverted education in every culture around the world now just like with everything some of the true events are going to slip through i don't think they did an absolute were able to do an absolute clean wipe and don't forget that there's a lot of ancient texts that are literally carved into stone and carved into the temples so uh, you know the question of did the romans really do all of this conquest well Trajan's column is a uh, whatever 150 foot tall carved into stone account of those ancient events. Now, sure, it could have been fake, but that's some dedication that really wasn't necessary. And like I have covered in numerous videos, all of these so called ancient events, the source material is all from the 14th through 16th century. So, like I said, I've got some really awesome current affairs that I want to tell you guys about next, but I, I do kind of want to, I'm not sure if I got a whole video worth of my point of view on this subject, but I can tell you all about the forgeries of the clergy establishing their order, having an absolute lockdown on knowledge, and this was the time of the printing press, which they had to suppress it's just like today with the internet they have to keep us silent especially when they're running their flags and basically anything that's happening these days they need to control the narrative but uh i see some definite cracks in their facade and i don't think things are going quite as well as they wanted them to and you'll see that somebody that actually has a lot of sway in this world right now, has proclaimed these weffers to be targets of high military value. So a price on their head for the crime of an attempted international coup d'etat. And I'll just tell you right now what I see going on over there. You know where. Uh, this has nothing to do with God. This is 100% a man-made orchestrated ordeal. And, uh, you know, I see the Christians and conservatives jumping on board 100% and accepting every little thing that they put out as gospel truth now when everything that we have heard for the last 30, 40 years regarding big events has not been true. But now they're giving you the straight story on this one? <laughs> Give me a break. Anyway, now what do you guys think about the book of Revelation? Was it... End time prophecy? Or was it describing what happens periodically here on Earth and weaving in a very nefarious plan for the next time this comes around? Static out.